So how is this accurate and infinite? And how do you know this pattern is accurate and infinite? The first two words of the name of the paper. Well, I think as human beings, first of all, we have an inherent ability to recognize patterns. And for me, when I looked at this chart right here, um, it kind of says it all. Uh, basically, this goes up to 1008 and starts off with 24 and then 48 and then 72. Every 24 cycles creates another circle that's uh, concentric going outwards from center. And what, uh, what you find here is that all the red numbers are prime and all of the green numbers are a new classification of what we call non-prime numbers. Uh, which we are calling quasi-primes. That means they have characteristics of prime numbers, but they're not actually prime numbers. So as an example, 95 is a quasi-prime number. 119 is a quasi-prime number. 143 is a quasi-prime. And that's interesting to note because these numbers we found were all divisible by large prime numbers. That means numbers that were larger than the number 5, uh, greater than or equal to 5. So two and three are also prime, but they don't show up on this chart as having their own spoke, as it were, going out from the center, which means that they have a different purpose. And I think one of the things I just discovered is that the square root of two and the square root of three added together equals pi plus an offset factor. So it adds up to 3.14626. And that offset factor is, is a fundamental offset that we've now realized also relates to four over pi. Uh, but, but that... You know, the fact that square root of 2 and the square root of 3 have that property, and also 2 plus 3 equals 5, and 2 times 3 equals 6. So you have a 6 over 5 relationship, again, which is the pentagon-hexagon merger, So, which all fundamental life is basically uh, predicated upon. So organic chemistry, et cetera, you remember, it's all pentagon-hexagon. So what we, what we discovered here was that the red numbers were all prime and the green numbers were all quasi-prime. And then another thing that came out of this that was really fascinating was that the yellow numbers here, which also have a periodicity of 24. So you can see them starting with 25, 49, right? And then it goes to uh, 121, which you can't really see that well here, 169, 289, 361, and so on. This is five times five, seven times seven, uh, 11 times 11, 13 times 13, 17 squared, 19 squared, right, 23 squared, and so on. And what we found is that there's never a break in that all prime squared always end up in this first modulus, right, or the first spoke of this 24-hour clock. And that was fundamental because we found that always the, um, the prime squared numbers were always multiples of the number... 24, uh, so that's why they always end up, it's always 24 plus 1. And that was a, another thing we found that had a unique wave characteristic, wave dynamic associated with it, that we were very fascinated by. So basically we felt, okay, the 24-hour clock must be something very fundamental. That's called in polygonal geometry, uh, Euclidean geometry. We'd be referring to that as an icosi tetragon. And we found many other correspondences as well, including the blue numbers down the center, which all relate back to fundamental irrational numbers or what we call math constancies. And I teach all of this in the course on Resonance Academy. And that, uh, that course is called Etymology of Number. Uh, for the more advanced series of the course, it's called Language of Light. So people that finish the first course can go on to Language of Light. We're very excited that uh, Cornell University Press published this uh, just yesterday and uh, excited about what it means for our understanding of our universe around us because we believe that a cosmology can be constructed off of this information. As I look at this, I don't just see these numbers, I actually see electromagnetism and gravity. So what's the implication of this discovery then? I don't think we know enough yet to know how profound the implication is. Um, I, honestly, I think that we are barely kind of scratching the surface still, and we're doing a lot of research in this regard. And the way that I discovered it in the first place was, first of all, Peter Plichta had done some work showing that the, the prime numbers all showed up, the red numbers here showed up on a 24-hour clock in the shape of the Templar cross as well, which was interesting. But I was more interested in understanding why the other numbers weren't prime, like the, the green numbers. And it was through understanding what the green numbers were or what was not prime or what was, you could say, analogous to what's the vacuum. Let's say we want to understand prime numbers and so we want to understand 
matter, for example. Uh, and, and so therefore, what my thought was, well, maybe I could understand what was not matter. And by understanding what was not matter, analogous to vacuum, by understanding the vacuum, maybe I could understand matter better. And it was the other way around. So that's exactly what we, we did. So when, when I looked at this, and I also thought, well, 24 was fundamental because Fibonacci numbers in digital root analysis, which is just adding a number within itself, like 27, would have a digital root of nine. We realized that every Fibonacci number had a repeating pattern every 24 cycles. So I thought 24 must be something fundamental. And you know, four times three times two, those of, you, those of you that are musicians out there might be familiar with 432 tuning, four times three times two times one equals 24 as well. And I thought that was interesting. And so I thought maybe I'll look at prime number analysis and see if I can find a language of the math constants embedded within a 24 periodicity. And that's what we did. Awesome.